Stadia, bloody hell, things are looking really rough with it. In today's report, we've got dire numbers to explore, plus some killer blockers to its success, ones that could only be overlooked by a horrendously out of touch leadership at Google. So we're just back for the new year. There's a lot to talk about. So uh, smash that like button and sub for a bunch of new videos this week. And with that, let's get going. All right, let's get the numbers first. Destiny 2 is a near perfect measure of Stadia's overall performance because all current Stadia founders, well, they've got access to Destiny 2 for free at the highest playback quality. I mean, hell, cross save even works. And that means you can just take your Destiny character over to the Stadia version. Now, given that, uh, you know, Destiny 2 was pretty heavily marketed with Stadia, you know that this was an important thing for Google. But unfortunately to Google, who, you know, wouldn't be the type to share statistics that make them look bad, uh, you know, such as maybe some of the lies they sold Stadia on, well, we've got access to the Destiny 2 player numbers. So right after launch, PC and PS4 had just shy of half a mil players each, while the Xbox had 331k. Stadia had 19,400. Uh, pretty bad, but hey, people were getting Stadia for Christmas. Maybe the founder's kits were late and more people were going to play it. Let's look at the January numbers. Uh, all platforms for Destiny are down about 5 to 10%. But on Stadia, it's more than halved, down from that 19,400 to 8,020. That is horrendous, but it's not surprising, and it's all down to the fundamental weaknesses of Stadia, weaknesses that Google have obviously glossed over. Let's talk about value, right? Gaming without the console. That is literally Google's marketing line for this. And it's, you know, the whole thing is that Stadia is supposed to be great value. You don't need to buy the console. Well, here's the thing that really kills the value of Stadia. If you've got a console or a PC, you don't need a great internet connection. Okay, you want to have good ping but you don't need massive downstream or upstream. With Stadia though, you need to have really good download speeds and you need to have excellent ping. And while Google says that you only need 10 down or 35 down for 4K, we found that to not really be the case. We found that you've needed a decent bit more than that in order to have good results on Stadia. But here's the thing past that, uh, you know, that costs money, right? Take British Telecom for $29.99 a month, you'll get 50 megabytes or megabits down. Well, that's above Google's recommendation, but in our Ethernet testing, not necessarily for ideal performance. And then you've got to remember something. This is happening in a house. Other people will be using the internet, so you're going to need headroom, taking into account how incredibly fragile Stadia is. So 100 down connection costs $39.99 a month, 25% more expensive. Now that increased requirement that would make you get that connection, that's because of Stadia. Stadia. Now, 50 down a month, easy for a console. It'll, you know, hardly use any data when playing a multiplayer game. But here's the thing, across eight years, that better internet connection is almost a grand and eight years is about a console cycle. And that's here in the UK. In the US, it's way more expensive and American consumers deal with data caps far more than UK consumers do. Now, Google have made a product for people in the city who've got enough money to have a premium internet connection. Now, given that, you know, it was made by a bunch of well-paid Californians, that's hardly a surprise. Price, but if their goal is to overall deliver value to consumers, you can see that the fundamentals there do not work out, especially when you take into account the value proposition of, say, you know, Xbox Game Pass and what it actually gives you for your money. I mean, if you want a Stadia killer, get cheap internet, uh, get an Xbox, PS4, or a low-end uh, gaming PC, use sales and pre-owned. That will be far cheaper than Stadia. You'll get a better gaming experience, right? You'll have none of that latency. You'll have a less fragile gaming experience. It's not gonna fall over whenever somebody fires up Netflix. It's just gonna work better in realistic scenarios. And really, that's the next killer for Stadia. Fragility. Stadia is fragile. Google Speed Checker recommends that people stop downloads, stop file sharing, and close all other tabs of streaming audio and video. I mean, duh, it's a speed test. Of course you're going to do that. But what it's also doing is saying this, create an unrealistic ideal scenario that favors our product. Because here's the deal. When I was a student, I shared a Wi-Fi connection with up to four other people. Whenever I go home and, you know, I'm an only child, you know, just the two parents in the house. But if they're watching Netflix in the evening, oh, that's another data use. So here's the thing. It's made by a bunch of techies in a bubble. Now, this tech is really cool, but it just doesn't really work. I mean, you've got all those household examples. Even a hotel, right? In a hotel, you're going to have shared Wi-Fi, and you're also not going to be right beside the router. So basically, I mean, in our realistic scenarios, we were right beside an extremely good business class router, and you know we got decent enough performance. 
if we were to go through like a wall and not even a thick brick wall, just a regular one, we actually had noticeable steady performance issues. So, you know, be this so in a hotel, right? You plug it into the ethernet, that's fine. But in a household situation, right? If you're getting this for your kids, are your kids going to have ethernet in their bedrooms? No, they're not. Is the router going to be right beside where Stadia is? No, it's not. As you can see, there are just so many instances where Stadia falls over. It's actually quite impressive. You know, when you're on a 100 down connection, ethernet, and it's all running fine. But realistically, that's just not going to happen. Overall, I think the only people this product really works for is uh, single people in a city with good internet who uh, just don't have other people over. And I mean, sure, that's a use case, but it is so much less versatile than just about any other gaming solution. And guess what? When we go back to Stadia as a product, it gets a bit worse. Rise of the Tomb Raider has been added to the free library for January for pro users. Okay, that's pretty cool. But just as they give, they also take, because Tomb Raider Definitive Edition is leaving the pro tier and will be purchasable again. Now, it will remain playable, of course, if you redeemed it last month, but uh, that's it. And here's the key takeaway, right? The business model is that you sub and redeem every month. It is not, seemingly, an ever-expanding library of games you get access to, like Game Pass. Uh, you know, Game Pass, right? The value proposition gets better over time. Instead, here, it's a FOMO play. Can that stand up against xCloud and Game Pass? No. No, it can't. It is just a worse value. And here's the thing. Streaming needs to be additive. It needs to be an option. It cannot be the only offering of your product because, I mean, they just have to realistically think about the rest of the market. Somebody's got Xbox, you know, the, the ultimate thing that just gives you all the stuff. They're, they, you know, they've got Game Pass and for basically the same price as your Stadia Pro subscription, they also get a massive library of games just that they can play those games on xCloud wherever they go and then when they get back to their Xbox or their Windows PC, oh, they can just play those games on those platforms locally. And that means that even any game purchases that you make, they just have far much more value to you because you're getting a more, I suppose, diverse product. You know, you can use it streaming, you can use it on local hardware. It's just so obvious that Google have got this business model so wrong and have just been thinking about, let's make some cool tech in our bubble and not about the customer. Now, to end this, though, I do actually want to mention a pathway to Stadia being a good, a decent product. It's only, like, good to actually give honest feedback. So, first, your app needs more settings to manage quality, so users have more control there. You also need to make Pro a better value proposition. Make it an expanding library like Games Pass. You need to be more transparent with your marketing, so people actually know what they're getting, and your library needs to be way more robust. I mean, take an example, right? We're making a narrative game, right? Our, our studio, just behind me. Uh, we don't need Twitch reactions for our game, and that means our game would run great on Stadia. And, you know, we're like a lot of other indies. So if Stadia had a really good indie library where, you know, we had a lot of games that, uh, you know, were, were pretty tolerant to latency, that would actually make your product way better. But instead, there's more of a focus in these AAA games. And I get that those AAA games will bring people in, but ultimately, you've got to make your customers happy or else they'll leave. And as these, you know, destiny numbers would suggest, your customers seem to actually be leaving. So they need to work out how can they just get more content on that platform. And for people who have that pro subscription, you know, how do you increase the value of that? Because I'm going to be honest here, paying like 10 a month or whatever it is just for 4K60 and some free games that's not really great. So there you go, that's it for this video. We are starting 2020 off with a completely hubristic, out of touch company, kind of uh, not really doing that well because they didn't think about their customers. What a massive surprise that is. Okay, that's it for me. Let me know what you think about this story. Be sure to like and sub. There'll be a lot more content on this channel as, as we hit the new year. We did take uh, two weeks off, which is why, you know, a few videos are obviously quite late, but we took that time off to make, uh, just, you know, good improvements behind the scenes that I do believe will lead to more consistent, uh, you know, higher quantity of better quality videos, which is what we want to do. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.